All right, we have to add an addendum. We do a whole podcast. We talk for 45 minutes about Illinois football. We have a conversation about the quarterbacks. And then, of course, news happens. Whenever you, you end a podcast, Joe, you get nervous that news can happen right after it, rendering part of the podcast uh, irrelevant. And that's kind of what happened with a little bit of our quarterback conversation. We didn't dive too much into it, but we said it'll be interesting to see if Illinois adds an experienced quarterback. Uh, and they do. And they have. And I guess they have for a while. Ball State transfer John Paddock. Uh, Max Olson from The Athletic was the first to report that he is going to Illinois, and we follow up and report, and he indeed is at Illinois. Sixth-year senior quarterback started at Ball State last season. Uh, the Cardinals went 5-7. and seven. Uh, He threw for 2,700 yards, 18 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Joey, what was your initial reaction? We thought this was coming, right? In terms of, well, I don't think we thought that they were going to go into the season with a, red, a couple of redshirt freshmen and true freshmen behind Luke Altmaier. And I need to add a big, sorry, Joey, I need to add no. a big uh, qualifier here. He is a walk-on there it at is. Illinois. Yes. So I needed to add that. It's kind of an important detail in this conversation. And may have the most important detail, Jeremy, to get to get uh, uh, Division One. He, I know he started for one year, but he's got the five years of experience to get a Division One guy as a walk-on to come into the program. The pitch had to be, you're going to be a snap away, and probably some, I would think some of, hey, we're going to give you every chance here, uh, but this is our Luke's our guy, and you're going to be a snap away most likely. Man, that's a that's a pretty good recruiting win for Illinois to, to go get an experienced guy, an older guy, a guy who's been in college football a long time. To presumably, I think presumably, be the backup or compete for the backup uh, position with, with some of those younger guys as a walk-on. You're not on your 85. That that's a. Um, I don't know why. I don't, I don't know, Jeremy. What's that tell you about the pitch that Illinois has? The pitch is you're one snap away, as you said, and I think this is kind of exactly what you and I were thinking about. Uh, but maybe we we're thinking about a FCS start. Yeah. Right. Like we were talking about an FCS starter, not a division one starter. And again, it wasn't like he set the world on fire at ball state, basically one to one touchdown interception ratio. I think this is pretty non-threatening to Luke Altmeyer, which is important, right? He is the starter at Illinois and I don't really expect this to be a competition. I imagine it's like Tommy DeVito. He's going to get 80 plus percent of the snaps as the first stringer during spring ball, like DeVito had last year. Um, but it's a guy that is an experienced division one player that you feel like if you put in a game might not kill you. Right. And, and has the chance to raise the floor of that room. And that's the concern is what is the floor of that room behind Luke Altmeyer, who runs, who is thin, right? Like one injury away. What is Illinois quarterback room? And no matter what you think about Art Sikowski, you felt like all right, he can go into a game and at least allow you to compete if your run game and your defense are successful. And that's going to be, Iowa. yeah, it's going to be the same thing with uh, John Paddock, right? Is who that's what a backup quarterback usually is uh, for the non powerhouse programs. Right. Um, so I, I think it's a great addition for Illinois is, is a walk on. I, I think it does tell you about the transfer portal and quarterbacks. I mean, this is a division one starter, who enters the transfer portal, probably knowing he wants to go up a level and might have to take a walk-on role, but there's just so many, only so many spots available for quarterbacks that, um, you know, this, this kind of shows that you can still get a good one to add some depth. And that was the key. Like we felt good about what Luke Altmaier brings talent wise. We just have no idea what is behind him. And that's really scary. Um, given that Illinois has not had, a completely healthy year at quarterback. Even Tommy DeVito had to leave a game and he had to go with Art Sikowski for a year. So it's rare to get through an entire season with one quarterback. So if you're John Paddock, you might have to pay your way for a year, but this is going to be a great opportunity for him to potentially play some Big Ten football and uh, gives you competition for Donovan Leary uh, and Kirkland Michaud and, and Cal Swanson. I think we know Cal is a year or two away at least, but it certainly gives competition to Donovan Leary who – uh, was the number two quarterback with a bullet before we learned this news. Yeah, and it, it's another veteran guy for Kirkland Michaud, for Donovan Leary, for Cal Swanson to learn from in terms of 
for Luke Allmeyer. Luke Allmeyer is a young dude, just another guy who's been around to to kind of show what it's like. I mean, until last year, John Paddock was a career backup at Miami at uh, Miami, Ohio. Yeah, which Ball State, Ball, Ball State. State. Goodness gracious, been a lot left. I was leaving basketball media availability when you texted me, like, "Hey, what's going on here?" Um, so I mean, look, this you can learn a lot from a guy who who's backed up a lot of seasons he's been that backup who, who fought his way to that number one spot at ball state so man is it gonna move the needle of illinois win total no but if you have been following this if you've seen how this room has been developing to have somebody who's been around who's thrown passes i'm gonna look up ball state who, who ball state play out of conference last season uh, the other thing about John Paddock, I want to mention yeah, to people. Go ahead, yeah. Uh, he and he and Donovan Larry, uh, great hair. Uh, he's he's maybe not oh, quite weird, hard. but but John Paddock, great head of hair, and uh, hey. everyone knows I can appreciate that. Hey, we we appreciate a good all hair team candidate, Jeremy. Um, John Paddock, look, he didn't play very. Well. I'm pulling up the box, but he played it at Tennessee last year. Which again, uh, let's see, he yeah, he's 27 to 43, a touchdown, two picks. That's fine. But he, you like you've had those moments and those environments that he's like, played in front of a hundred thousand fans, <laughs> right? And like, I'm not again. No, we're not trying to sell like, hey, look out! Like, just to have that in the room, somebody who's who stepped in those situations is really. I mean, we thought that was a, a kind of a key missing piece to this Illinois team, and you've seen them address that uh, with, with this addition. Yeah. So uh, for Paddock. You get an opportunity here, right? And as I said, it's rare to have a starting quarterback go through an entire season healthy. For Illinois, you get experience depth. This makes sense uh, from both sides. I know some people might be shocked like a Division One starter decides to be a walk-on. Man, you get an extra, this is an extra year for him. Sixth year. Why not take your shot, right? Why not take your shot at, at a place like Illinois um, where – they don't have any depth. It's really a great opportunity for him as long as he can pay his way, and he obviously can. Uh, I, I know you've reported he's on campus. So we just the behind the scenes, we can't talk to him until it's orchestrated through Illinois. But I would be curious, and I don't know, I don't know this to be the case at all. But if he's a guy who sixth year that free year, if you want to go that coaching route and you look at like an Art Sikowski who's a, elevated himself up, like could you see this as a chance to be in a room with? with Guys, if I, I don't know, I, we don't know, him. we haven't talked to him. I don't know if that's in the cards for him, but it's an interesting thing to to ask because Illinois kind of got a little bit of a a thing going there, at least with Art. Uh, John did message me and he said I didn't make an announcement because it was a late decision, but he's pumped to be here. I don't think I'll get in trouble for that. I didn't follow up, and yeah, they. they I don't am want... sending a text to Mark <laughs> on you right now. You're sure, buddy. Well, I didn't know. We didn't know he's on no, campus. That's right. Right. That's so right, so yeah. now that he's on campus, I said, "Hey, hope to meet up with you at spring ball." But um, yeah, I think it's a makes sense. I think it makes sense from from all accounts here, Joe. It's crazy to cover a football team that does things that make sense. This makes sense, and there's no no knock on Donovan Leary, no knock on Kirkland Me Show, but. Going into a season where you're trying to build on an eight-win year with two redshirt freshmen as your backup quarterback is not to, to steal for eight, not ideal. Like that's just not an insurance policy that that's really favorable for Illinois. Well, listen, and you hope Donovan Leary's great. He was the fourth quarterback last year. Kirk Omisho was the fifth quarterback. Those guys have to earn the number two spot, right? Like I, I think the competition for the number two spot is a really imp- interesting um, competition going into spring ball. Um, so I, I think that's that's where I go with this, is it's more of a, all right, now now Don Valer, you got to go win this job, or Kirk Misho, you got to go win this job, and, and Paddock certainly has to go get the backup job. So um, non-threatening to, to Luke Altmeyer, in my opinion, but at least you do have a guy that's got D1 experience that if Altmeyer struggles or gets injured, um, you feel like maybe you got a, a guy who can be competitive. I'm just laughing at how things have changed over the course of like, so I got on the beat in 2018 is like, who's going to be the starter. And now you and I are like, you know, an interesting storyline going into spring is who's going to be the backup. Cause I don't think you and I ever fell for the smoke and mirrors that it was going to be anybody not named Tommy DeVito. Because we, let's be honest. I had watched film of Tommy DeVito and we had seen Art Sikowski and nothing against Art. He's going to be a phenomenal coach, but it's like, which one, like which one's dynamic. It was Tommy DeVito. It was clear. 
and he ended up having the season that he had. It's just, it, is it not crazy to you that at this point, like in our minds, unless Luke Altmaier plucks every pass he ever throws into the dirt all spring, like we know, I should say grass or turf, whichever. We know who, who the quarterback's going to be, and our attention goes to the number two quarterback. It's times they are changing, Jeremy Warner. Yeah. Joey Wagner, thank you, man. Appreciate it.